Uh, this morning we're going to head out wide. We're going to be chasing Red Emperor. Uh, I've got a friend coming around shortly. We'll load the boat up and then head out towards the 50 to 70 metre mark. We're going to drift along the contours and see if we can pick up some good reds along the edges. So we'll load the boat up now and get into it. Let's do it. Just gone over a lump. I've backtracked over it. Looks like there's a heap of fish down there. 64 meters. That looks sweet. Hopefully we pull something up. Let's do it. We're still under 100 meters, so I still like to maintain 200 kilohertz. We've wound it down to four times zoom, so we're picking up the bottom 20 meters of water, which is what we're really interested in on this contour line. All we're picking up here, if I zoom right in, you can see some small patches of fish on the floor, and that's all we're really looking for. So if I drive over this quickly, which I'll try to to show you what the contour line looks like. All right, what we can see here is we're gradually coming up the top of the contour line from 70 up to about 65 meters. And 
as I slow down here, right on top of this 70 meter contour line is usually where we'll find a lot of fish hanging. So I'll zoom in now on the sounder so we can actually see what's down the bottom, this small patch of fish. That's what we're chasing. If we're not fishing certain lumps, contour lines are a good way to start. Um, so now we're just sitting on the top of these contours and drifting and usually the fish will either be hanging on top of the contour or down the bottom edge and that's a good place to start chasing red. So right now we're drifting down these contours and all we're looking for is some bait fish like this. So as we talked in some of the previous episodes, things we like to play around with is when we're at drifting pace, we adjust the gain and wind the gain up so we can see the bait fish and we can see some fish working above them and a little bit on the floor there. Now if your gain wasn't wound up enough or back it off, back it off, you could almost miss these fish. We had our gain set to about this setting. There's no way we'd know there was fish there. So we wind the gain up and you slowly start picking up what's on the floor. If the gain's cranked too far up, you'll get plenty of noise on the screen and we're not looking for that either. So we like to back it off so we lose a lot of the background noise and just picking up what we want to see on the sounder. A couple of decent reds. Take these ones home. A little bit of a cook up tonight. It's a slow morning but uh, finally got onto them. So. Nice looking fish. Do some rigging up at home too. So shoot back now and get into it. Phew. Try and make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, lab right on So the filleting's just been finished. We've got the fillet sitting in the fridge now. So today I started off slow. We we're fishing in like 70 meters of water, which I find is a good place to start for reds. I mean, we've caught them anywhere between you know six meters shallow all the way out to 100 plus meters of water. I roll a bit of footage now from some of the reds that we've caught on both spear and rod and after that we'll run through the rig, show you how we set up the snell droppers on it and then we'll jump to the kitchen. <laughs>
for the Red Emperor rig, it's a simple pattern officer rig. Um, nothing super fancy, but nevertheless, there's a few things that I'll show you that might help out a little bit. So, all it is is just a double hook setup um, with a snail dropper on it. So, we've got a swivel at the top, a foot of dropper, a length about a foot and a half to the next dropper, another snail setup, and then a sinker on the bottom. Now, one important thing for the red emperor is they are a demersal. So, I recommend either getting a drift anchor out if your drift is quite strong or fish with heavier weights or if you have to continue to let line out to actually keep these baits on the floor. For reds I like to use strip baits, either mullet or oki or squid is a good place to start. But there is the um, dropper, I'll show you how to tie it up now. And then we'll jump to the kitchen and cook this fish up. Let's get into it. For the snell dropper we're using 120 pound supple trace. On each dropper I like to use a circle hook and an octopus hook. I also like to have a bend in the eye on the top of the octopus hook, the one that we're going to tie the snell knot to. The reason for that is when we tie the snell knot, we're able to come back up the eye of the hook and it sits straight down the line. I'll show you that in a second. I like to crimp the bottom circle hook on the snell. That allows full movement in the circle hook. Another thing I like to use is 3mm Lumo tube and I'll show you how I rig all this up right now. For your droppers you want about a foot and a half of litre. For the bottom hook I like to crimp it. So I run obviously run the crimp on and the bottom hook's going to be this is size 8 circle. When we run crimps on hooks, I like to come through the top of the eye and have the tag end hanging down the back of the eye. Now, same as I do with the heavier lines. I'll just burn a ball on the back of that, pull it up, and crimp this one off. Now, having it crimp and not tied on allows the circle hook to sort of move freely. Okay, so there's our bottom hook to the pad master. Quite easy, get it crimped on and it moves nice and freely. Now after that I like to run Lumo tube onto the end of this dropper. Cut your Lumo tube to length. I like to roughly use about 50 to 70 mil. This one here is about 70 mil. So put that on the end of the dropper line. Now this is 3 mil Lumo and 3 mil seems to be a pretty good diameter to be able to push up over your knots and also push over crimps. That'll hold it nicely. So I've got a free hanging circle hook on the bottom and now the luma. Now you want to feed the snail through the back of the eye. Like that. Now pull the line through. So we'll feed the hook all the way up the line. And for the snail part, all I do is grab the hook, feed it into the end of the luma tube until it comes about 5mm past the barb and then you can pierce the limo tube with a hook and push it through like so once we're at this point all we need to do is tie the snell knot which is super easy knot to tie um, this is a quick way of doing it all we want to do is have a look at the eye of the hook one side there's a join so I want to start the snell wrap on the opposite side of this hook. So I'm going to wrap down the hook now. Grab the leader line and I want to wrap that side there. Now we wrap it seven or eight times. One, that's a two, three, four, five. Okay, you've done your wraps. Now you want to come up through the back of the side of this hook.
through there, and then pull your line up tight. And that's how it should look like once it's finished. So we've got a circle down the bottom that can move easy, Lumo tube stiffens up the rest of the rig, and then a Snell hook. Make sure we've got the bent eye on the hook to keep it nice and straight. And that's what we're left with. This is particularly good when we're using strip baits and longer baits. Now the reason I like to have the crimp circle hook on the bottom, so when the fish comes and picks this up, it'll roll. It's got plenty of movement in that bottom hook. And then the second hook usually will come along and then pin the fish in the gill plate. So you have a double hook up and it's very rarely that you'll lose a fish on that sort of rig. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a given, but anyway. Yeah, it was a given. Four and a half. Four and a half? From me. Four and a half from it. <laughs> Super white, flesh, really flaky. Ooh. Yeah, no awesome fish to eat. Um Really juicy meat, big flakes in it, so it's got to be one of the best fish I reckon you can get. Um, I'm going to have to say, out of five star, not much else I can ask for, but I reckon we'll keep it at four and a half for now until we find that half star extra. I'm not sure it exists, but we'll give this one a four and a half out of five star rating. Red Emperor, delicious. For the rest of the fillets, we're going to make some Asian sauce tonight and some coconut rice. We're going to see how it all goes, so let's get into it. Rice, three quarters of a cup. A tin of coconut milk. Throw in a pinch of salt, whack it on the stove, and bring that rice to the boil. Once she's at the boil, I want to bring it back and just let it simmer till that rice gets nice and cooked. I know for the sauce, we're going to put in a decent splash of fish sauce. Out of there, and a couple of teaspoons of ginger, a bit of red chili, heap of coriander, fresh garlic. Get that in there. Half a lemon juice. We add a little mix up. Good. Finish off a little bit of brown sugar to swing on. Uh, 
fish nice and simple. We're gonna do a splash of peanut oil in the pan and also a little bit of coconut oil. Okay, time for the taste test. Bit of Asian style. Fresh? Good? Mm -hmm. A different way to cook the red emperor. Yeah, that is really yummy. Fresh red emperor, jam nim. Sauce and a bit of <laughs> coconut rice. Slapped it up. Delicious or what? Give that one a go next time. Good chefing, bro. Alrighty guys, cheers for watching the episode. If you liked it, drop a like below and leave a comment if you want us to try and target any certain species in the future episodes. Thanks again, and we'll catch you on the next one. You f If you like the uh, episode, um, if you like the episode, just that. Nick's gonna shut the uh, episode off. No, no, I, I can't find the words. Go for it. It's still recording. I'll just cut it. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed the movie, make sure you click like on the... <laughs> <laughs>